Cooper Castile. Cooper, uh, steal my heart. You stole my heart. That's right. You, buddy. You did it. Thanks for the support. I'm, I feel sick, Jesus. By the way, after counting up all the other reviews, this is apparently the 50th episode of Coop's Reviews. Uh, alrighty then. 50 episodes! Woo! Enjoy the video. You guys remember the movie Small Soldiers? Yeah, apparently this movie was DreamWorks' answer to Toy Story. It was an okay movie, nothing too special. I used to watch it all the time when I was a kid. I even had it on VHS. I still enjoy re-watching this movie as a nice piece of nostalgia. Though, going back to it, I do not remember it being anywhere near as violent as it was when I was a kid. With DreamWorks hoping this movie would be a huge hit, they really tried to push it to be successful. So much so that they made a few video games for it, which I didn't know existed until recently. They made games for the Game Boy, PS1, and two PC games. The PC games are apparently RTS games that I'm not too interested in. Strategy games are not really my thing. So for this video, I'm going to be focusing on the other two Small Soldiers games, which are the Game Boy and PlayStation games. Let's look at the Game Boy game first. Small Soldiers on Game Boy was developed by Tier Text Design Studios, who are most well known for... garbage? And for going out of business in 2003. Oh, speaking of going out of business, the game was also published by THQ, the masters of publishing licensed games. Oh boy. Well, let's start the game. Wow. This doesn't look too good. In both the Game Boy and PS1 games, you only get to play as Archer, which kinda stinks. I like Archer, and he probably would have been my first pick anyways, but wouldn't you have liked to have the option to play as any other Gorgonite? That's a bit of a missed opportunity. So you walk to the right and... What the fuck is going on? I'm getting shot at by commandos! Why can't I attack? Why doesn't A do anything? Why is the B button jump? And why is there like a full second delay when you jump? When you press B, you don't immediately jump? You trigger this really slow animation, then you finally jump. After like a million years. Why did they program it like that? You might be thinking, well, maybe your emulator is just really bad. No, I'm playing this on the GameCube's Game Boy player and using the Game Boy interface which has no input lag. Not convinced? I used both the Game Boy Advance and the GameCube controller to check and both had the same delayed jump. Still not convinced? I checked on the Game Boy Advance itself. Still delayed jump. Hell, I went further back, dug out my old Game Boy Color, and still the jump is delayed. What the fuck? I haven't seen a jump delay this bad since Terminator on NES. What a shitload of fuck. Was having the fancy little animation really worth it? The animations in this game are really good for the Game Boy, but because it's on the Game Boy, it moves really slowly. The graphics for this game are... kinda whack. This game was released right around the time the Game Boy Color came out, but they still released it as a regular Game Boy game. However, it's one of those Game Boy games where if you play it on a Color, or Advance, it'll actually play in Color. And it looks like shit. It's green and blue everywhere. I do like that Archer and the Commandos are properly colored, but that's about it. It's such a dull game to look at. It reminds me of that shitty Stort Little game on Game Boy Color. Both literally look identical. Holy shit, the music is also really fucking bad. I know, it's the Game Boy, but that's no excuse. Game Boy games, and other 8-bit games for that matter, can be damn well capable of making great music. Super Mario Land's soundtrack is phenomenal, but the music in this game has some borderline cheetah vibes to it. It's that bad. Well, I guess focusing on the gameplay again, so you can't fucking attack at all. But if you tap A, you can run! You can use it to run and jump higher in some parts. That's neat, I guess. 
grabbing onto ledges can be really obnoxious. You have to be on the right pixel to grab a ledge. It took me a while to really master grabbing onto ledges in this game, but I got the hang of it. No biggie. So, uh, this first level is, uh, fucking impossible to beat. I have no clue where I'm supposed to go, and I keep running into commandos who attack and kill me. By the way, you die once, you go back to the start. Don't you love when older games do that? Hey, um, you know what would have been pretty helpful? Maybe if you gave me a fucking weapon to defend myself! Archer is holding his crossbow! Why can't I use it? Okay, so apparently, at some point you do get to use a weapon, just not at the start of levels- Oh, no, 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 no! You have to acquire the pieces of your weapon in order to use it. What? Why? Why did they make it that way? Why not just give me the weapon at the start? It doesn't have to be so fucking cryptic! You're making a portable side-scrolling video game for children! On Game Boy! Why make the first fucking level impossible to finish? Guess what, I can't find any weapons, and I died. Game over. Sweet. So what's the guy to do when he can't beat the first level? Well, it's time to cheat. Unfortunately, finding cheats for this game is also impossible! There's only like two passwords I could find for levels 4 and 5, but I swear to you, there is nothing online about what the passwords for levels 2 and 3 are. There was nothing on GameFAQs, there wasn't even anything on the Small Soldier's Wiki. Also, I think there's only five levels in the game? That's... pathetic. So I guess we're gonna have to skip levels 2 and 3. Sorry everyone. Go play this game for yourself if you want to try to get to levels 2 and 3. For now though, it's a mystery. Um, we have another problem. What is this password screen? So instead of having you input numbers or letters for the passcodes, the game has you cycle through these low-res, pixely photos of the characters. So not only do you have to squint really hard to see which character you're choosing, but you also have to memorize which character you're supposed to be choosing? I can barely remember what all the names for the Commandos or Gorgonites are. Why the fuck did they make the password system so needlessly tedious? No wonder you fuckers went out of business. Okay, on to level 4. You're walking around some vents? You can actually travel through the vents like they're warp zones. That's pretty fun. Still not too sure which way to go, but... Whoa, whoa what the fuck? There's a time limit? Yeah, apparently you have to make your way to some garbage can on some invisible time limit. Otherwise, all the Gorgonites are gonna get crushed inside a trash compactor. The trash compactor is where this fucking game should go. Fuck this, let's go to level 5, which is presumably the last level. You're just walking around, completely unable to defend yourself. Again. I actually made it pretty far in this level. I made it to some garage section filled with power tools and other things you could turn on. But I'm still really, really lost here. I don't know which way to go. I got so bored that I turned on this gear device to let it kill me. Well, that's it. That's the game. The Commandos succeeded in their mission to exterminate the Gorgonite scum. The end. Small Soldiers on Game Boy sucks. It sucks in the same vein as those shitty LJN movie tie-in games from the NES days. Glad to see this form of shitty game still had life of some kind in the 8-bit world. Don't play this. It's slow, boring, and not worth your time at all. Fuck this game. Well, I guess this means the next game is the PS1 game. This time, it was developed by DreamWorks Interactive themselves, and published by EA of all companies. The packaging for this game is pretty sweet. The cover art looks really good. Plus, when you open the case, you'll see Chip Hazard on the back of the booklet, and Archer on the disc. Both of them are facing each other. I think that's a really nice attention to detail. Looking on the back, the game is analog and rumble compatible. This game did come out in 1998, which was right around the time the DualShock was introduced. Though, if you're playing this game on PS3, you have to keep switching it back to analog controls every time you start a level. A bit weird, but hey, at least it works. Also on the back, it says featuring Tommy Lee Jones as the voice of Chip Hazard. 
Yup, they actually got Tommy Lee Jones to voice Major Chip Hazard in this game. That's cool and all, but he's the only actor from the movie to reprise his role. So all the other Commandos and all the Gorgonites have different voice actors. This kinda hurts because I love Archer's voice in the movie. He had the coolest voice ever. So the fact that his movie actor isn't in the game made me pretty sad. Greetings, Alan. Now shut up. I am Archer, emissary of the Gorgonites. Mm -hmm. And we can either wait patiently, build our reserves, and fashion our weapons, or we can go out to meet it. Yikes. Speaking of yikes, these FMVs are really weird looking. The mouth animations especially look odd. It just comes off as really creepy to watch. The compression isn't helping matters either. Though, interestingly enough, there's an official trailer for this game on the Small Soldiers DVD, which features the opening FMV in higher quality. It's pretty surreal. What's pretty interesting is that while the Game Boy version was centered around the plot of the actual movie, the PlayStation version actually takes place in the fictional world that the toys in the movie are from. I think that's pretty intriguing. It comes off like a fictional game that would have been put in the movie itself. Because of this, all the levels in the PS1 game are far more fantastical and alien. The music was even given a good boost. The soundtrack was composed by Michael Giacchino, who would later go on to compose movies like The Incredibles, the MCU Spider-Man movies, the Jurassic World films, and many others. His career actually started out with video games. And what's pretty cool about the PS1 Small Soldiers game is that you can put the game disc in any regular CD player, and you can listen to and or rip the soundtrack. It's really cool. The soundtrack is pretty good. I'd recommend looking it up. I actually uploaded the full thing to my second channel, so go check it out there. The music really helps at giving each level in the game their own lived-in feel. Oh yeah, plot summary. The Commando Elite want to eliminate all the Gorgonites, so Archer and the Gorgonites have to fight back. That's it. Gameplay. In the single player campaign, you only get to play as Archer. I know I said for the Game Boy game that I would have chosen Archer to begin with, but I still think it would have been cool if we could play as the other Gorgonites. Sort of a missed opportunity. I guess focusing on Archer, well, unlike the Game Boy game where you couldn't attack enemies until you found the parts for your weapon, in this game you can attack enemies just fine. Thank God. You move Archer around by using tank controls of all things. Thankfully, the game appears to be designed around this gameplay style, so it's not a huge issue. As long as it's not Bubsy 3D, then that's fine. You can also shuffle left and right by using R1 and L1, which can be pretty helpful when battling commandos. I really like how when you're running and you start to turn left or right, Archer's character model leans in that direction. I always find it neat when third-person games add that little detail. It feels really nice. It reminds me of when Mario 64 and Mario Odyssey did that. I love it. You can also aim over the shoulder by holding R2. Every third-person shooting game needs to have this. Most of the levels are just about running around and fighting some of the same commandos. While playing, you can pick up some more power-ups and other things. You can cycle through them by using L2. You can also pick up items that allow you to summon a specific Gorgonite in a level by pressing the circle button. This is cool and really helpful, but I still think it would have been cool to play as any of the Gorgonites in single player. They had the models and animations ready, so why not? The levels themselves are... Alright. Level 1, Gorgon, involves you shooting down robots and rescuing one of the Gorgonites, Insaniac. One of my favorite Green Day albums. Good news, jumping doesn't take a million years to happen, and grabbing onto ledges is way easier. So already this game beats the Game Boy game by a full mile so far. I also managed to beat the first level in this version too. Sweet. Level 2, Dimensional Temple, is where the game really starts. You gotta run around collecting what the game calls Chanters, and return them to this little area where they drop keys for you to collect. You also end up running into... Major Chip Hazard? What? In the second level? Already? Well, we beat him, pretty easily. 
Guess we should get back to the le Wait, he comes back? Yeah, a repeating thing in this game is that you'll end up fighting some of the same commandos in the first few levels, including Chip Hazard? Shouldn't he be saved for the final boss? Oh, whatever. I beat level two. So far, so good. Level three, Floating Fortress. This one involves collecting more chanters. But this time, you run into Kip Killigan several times, instead of Chip Hazard. You remember Kip, right? He was the commando voiced by Mermaid Man. Kip Killigan, covert insurgent, sharp as a razor. Sir. I will be there! <laughs> yeah, try to unhear that. Also, I couldn't finish this level. I sort of got lost and I didn't know what else to do. Uh, I'd rather not give up on this game like I did the shitty Game Boy one. So I'm gonna look up some cheats. Good news, the PS1 game has passwords for all the levels and they're not set up stupid like the Game Boy game. You just gotta input the right buttons and that's it, perfect. Moving on to level four, Spirit Bog. I couldn't finish this one either, though while playing, some enemies ended up blowing themselves up, so that caught me off guard. This level is pretty cool looking, however, this is where I really started to notice how bad the draw distance is in this game. Every level has heavy amounts of black fog everywhere. It looks kinda shitty. I do think the fog helps the look of this level, but everywhere else, the game can look really rough. Also, you can't swim in this game, and I gave up on level 4 after running into a dead end. Oh well. Level 5, Canyon Village. This level kind of reminds me of the Ewok Village in Return of the Jedi. This level is, once again, about going around finding chanters and killing enemies. The commando you fight in this level is Butch, who has a fucking machine gun, which can eat away at your health. Thankfully, this game gives you more than one life, and it has a pretty fair checkpoint system. So it's not one death and you're done like the Game Boy game. This level also has a turret section where you can shoot at enemies and shit. I actually tried really hard to finish this level, but I ended up getting a game over. So, moving on. Level 6, Creepy Caverns. This level involves running around and destroying the commandos mining machines. I probably should have brought up that before the levels start, the game gives you your objectives to complete. However, my attention span is really fucking terrible, so I rarely ever read them. Sorry. Hey look, we're fighting Chip Hazard again. Did they run out of commandos to use already? I managed to summon Slamfist, who is super overpowered. Which doesn't surprise me, he was really useful. I made it decently far in this level, but ultimately got a game over. Again, I really do not like how Chip Hazard does pelvic thrusts in the game over screen. Level 7, Spaceship. We're in space now? What the fuck? One of the commandos is using a massive weapon on me right at the start? That's totally fair. I tried my damnedest to make it far in this level. I ended up finding out that these force shield doors can hurt you on touch. Jeez. Oh look, another game over. How shocking. Screw it, I can't beat this. Fuck this level. Level 8, Hall of Patriots. Commandos are everywhere! I don't like the sound of that so far. Yep, I was right, I got attacked right where I spawned. How fun. Though, this level does introduce a fun mechanic. Traveling in a walker. These are pretty fun, and the guns on them are really powerful. It's pretty sweet using these to shoot at enemies. But apart from that mechanic, this level is... boring, strangely enough. Not too interesting to look at. The walker is fun, but that's about it. Level 9, Graveyard of War. I like the name on this one. You walk around destroying things. This is somehow growing stale. Well, there's a lava pit in this one, so avoid it. How exactly is this supposed to be a graveyard? I guess I was thinking this level would look more like a stereotypical graveyard. You know, like the ones you see in cartoons or whatever. Oh well. Oh yeah, this level is also where I found out that the explosions you set off can still hurt you. I feel like a moron for not realizing this. 
Level 10, Nuclear Mine. This is a nice setting for this level. That's all I got. I can't remember anything else. Well, I died. Level 11, Launch Center. Okay, the fog in this level is astonishingly awful. It makes everything here look like an empty void. There's even a bottomless pit that's a literal void you can fall in. This game has such an unintentionally creepy atmosphere to it. Also, we fight Chip Hazard. Again. I spawned Punch It to help, and I think I accidentally got him killed. This level kind of stinks. Level 12. All hidden fear. Okay, cool! Enemies in their own walkers at the start! This is super unfair so far! How am I supposed to get past this? Well, I did manage to beat those two, but I still didn't make it very far. I got to use a walker again, but still died a bunch. Time to move on. Level 13, Garrison Prime. The last actual level in this game. And it is hard as hell. Unsurprisingly. Good music here. I like it. Why can't the enemies just die? It just occurred to me that I have not been able to beat another level in this game since level 2. That is sad. Well, here we are. Level 14. Inner Sanctum. The last level. Which is just the final boss fight with Major Chip Hazard. Is it gonna be just like the last few levels where you fought him as a regular NPC and he died real easily? That's what I was hoping for. It would have been really funny. Instead, the final boss has Chip Hazard operating a giant mech. At first, the boss is pretty easy, but once you get his health down to a certain point, he starts flying around and becomes almost impossible to beat. Wow, okay then. By the way, did you know you can adjust the game's difficulty in the options? I totally forgot about that. Whoops. Well, I set it to easy, and the final boss is still impossible for me to beat. So great, I couldn't finish either Small Soldiers game. Guess I'll have to use someone else's footage of the game's ending, which shows Archer rejoicing in defeating the Commando Elite, and that's it? The end. The only other option you can play in this game is the multiplayer, which I couldn't play myself. I'll have to use someone else's footage again. This is the only mode in the game where you can play as a different Gorgonite and one of the Commandos. It looks... alright from what I've seen. Eh. Oh yeah, there's also a password for you to see a demo of... Medal of Honor? Yeah, it's just a short little teaser video. I have never played Medal of Honor, but yeah, that's here, that's in the game, in case you wanted to know. Small Soldiers on PS1 is a much better game than the Game Boy version, no doubt, but it's also just kinda whack. It is an interesting piece of media if you like the movie, but that's pretty much it. The graphics are decent for PS1, but the draw distance is terrible. The gameplay is serviceable, but the levels can get really bullshit sometimes. The soundtrack is really good, though it's probably the best part of the game. Small Soldiers on PS1 is fine, but I'll probably never play it again. I do recommend it, but only if you're a fan of the movie and are interested in checking out the games because this is probably the best one unless you like RTS games, then maybe the PC games will interest you. I don't know. And those were the Small Soldiers video games. I thought they would be pretty interesting to look at since I had such a strong attachment to the movie as a kid. So, yep, I'm terrible at making endings, so I hope you enjoyed the review, and I will see you later. Bye.